Good morning, St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Due to circumstances of uh, with this pandemic that we're going through, we're offering you this worship service from our home. Nancy and I are pleased to be with you this morning. Um, not in person, but in spirit. Uh, this will be a short uh, Word of God service, so let us let us begin with a moment of silence and prayer as we as we reflect on God in our lives and um, where, where we start our day and where we end our day with the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Holy God, yeah. holy, holy and mighty, mighty holy, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth peace, peace good will towards men. men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who declares thy almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running to obtain thy promises, may be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus 17, 1-7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages. As the Lord commanded, they camped at Rebim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders in Israel. He called the place Messiah and Merbah because of the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I will go, sir, but he did not. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to be thee, O Christ. Christ. Well, this is an interesting Gospel and Old Testament reading for today. I thought they were very fitting for our circumstance of being um, uh, somewhat sequestered out of St. Peter's church building, and yet here we are worshiping God in the way that we can. And to me, that is what is important about today and really every day that our building is important. That beautiful structure that sits in downtown Sheridan with those gorgeous rebuilt um, windows, stained glass windows and the beauty of that. But we're, in a way, we are like the people on the move outside of that outside of that building. We are like the folks that left Egypt outside the church, and especially today, we are outside the church worshiping God. And at times, you know, we need, we need water. And, and just like when Moses, you know, was struggling with the people because they're wandering around and uh, they're, they're thirsty and they need uh, some nutrition probably, and they're wondering what they're, what, what are we doing, you know, and where are we going? And Moses asked God for direction, you know, and what is it? What is it that is happening here? And, and then, of course, you know, the staff, and he strikes the rock, and water comes pouring out, and then the people could drink. And then, uh, and, and the people were satisfied, but then they still, you know, they still wondered, is the Lord among us or not? And that's really where Jesus, you know, Jesus came to us to help us understand that the Lord is always with us. He gave us that human context that we can trust that God is continually with us, no matter what our circumstance or where we're at. And Jesus, I think Jesus, you know, you can tell, you know, he's a little bit frustrated with the leadership at that time, the Jewish leadership, you know, and not, not, because of their leadership, you know, they, they had a vision for the temple and what the temple would mean to people, that the temple could bring people to God. And they, and they trusted in that vision. But I think what frustrated Jesus was the way in which they were maneuvering their authority. And, you know, these folks had been in power and authority for you know, well over a hundred years, their families, you know, and they had wealth, they had power. And so they really, their, their, their dilemma, really, those Jewish leaders, 
Their dilemma was keeping Rome happy, because Rome put them in power, keeping Rome happy while, while leading this, this religion, this Hebrew religion, in a way to get to, so that people can see God. And you can, this gospel today tells me that Jesus is seeing that they are becoming too neutral in that, and that, and it goes back to that saying at the end of uh, Exodus that Nancy read that when the, when the Israelites continue to test the Lord, you know, is the Lord among us or not? And I think Jesus felt like these people were, these leaders were, were being drawn away from God and trying to be more of a middle of the road politicians. And so he's, he's asking them these two questions, you know, from these two parables, you know, which, which would you choose? You know, which, which is doing the right thing? And of course, it's telling in that first, in the, in the, in the first uh, parable, when they say, if we say this, the people will be angry at us. And so they become somewhat afraid and they want to say the right thing to be able to appease everybody. And Jesus is telling them in these two parables that that is not the right answer. When it comes to God, you need to trust that the Lord is with you. And that what you, you have to stick to your faith and your answer should be yes. Your yes should be yes and no be no. And really that, that so applies to today as we, as we, you know, maybe we're struggling having to stay home today on this Sunday. And it, but in a way, the, the decisions have to be made that yes has to be yes and no has to be no. And we can still worship the Lord. That we're, that's what we're doing now. And you all will do it in, in ways that you do every day, however you do that in your homes or at work. And, and, and we, we have to make our yes be yes and our no be no. And that we know that the Lord is among us. And we try trust that deep down into our souls that we know that God is with us and is and is leading us in ways that God knows best and we trust we trust that God knows what God wants God knows what God wants and he knows what's best for us each and every one of us and so I'd just like to close with that just trust that God knows what God wants and that he is with us Always. Amen. Amen. And now let us profess our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe Amen. in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us come before God in a posture of openness, expecting the Holy Spirit to transform our lives 
and to lead us into offering of our prayers as we respond. Hear us, good Lord. Hear us, good Lord. Free us from the bondage of our sinful ways, our blindness to truth, our stubbornness and lack of discipline, that we may yearn after the fruits of the divine. Word and follow its wisdom. Let us pray. Hear, Hear us, us, good, good Lord. Lord. Strengthen the love and devotion amongst family members, that forgiveness may heal old wounds and mutual affection pave the way to wholeness. Let us pray. Hear, Hear us, good, good Lord. Lord. Guide the leaders of our church, that there may be mutual respect across and a renewed sense of partnership in bringing God's kingdom into the most troubled corners of our neighborhoods and nations. Let us pray. Hear, Hear us, good, good Lord. Lord. Encourage our civic leaders to modify their convictions with compromise, that there may be a renewal of hope for those who live in poverty, unemployment, lack of education opportunities. Let us pray. Hear, Hear us, good, good Lord. Lord. Reveal the unfolding beauty of creation, the uniqueness of the seasons, and the joy and wonder of your handicraft that we may delight in guarding these gifts. Let us pray. Hear, Hear us, good Lord. Lord. Receive those who have died into your arms of mercy, that they may sleep in everlasting peace. Hear us, good Lord. Faithfully seeking the path to new life, let us continue our prayers as we offer special intentions for our congregation our families, for the diocese, and the broader church. We give thanks for health, for recovery from COVID. We pray for those that are suffering today. We pray for the fires, the hurricanes, Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together the words that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, trusting and knowing that God is with us. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And we'll see you soon, sisters and brothers in Christ. Goodbye.